For someone who's moved around a lot in his life and lived on several different continents, I've managed to not move house that many times to the course of it all. Which is a good thing, because it's not an experience I particularly enjoy or look forward to. Nonetheless, I haven't suffered anywhere near as much as the protagonist in tonight's story. Well, my dear friends, it's Monday. Welcome back to Dr. Creepen's Vault. Another week of stories for you, beginning with tonight's tale. I ask that you just do one thing for me. Sit back and relax with your favorite drink, because now it's time to listen. June 30th. The void that my parents have left behind ever since their death has slowly begun to consume the whole of me. I'd seen it happen with my own eyes. My parents inside a car being crushed under an oil tanker, followed by a colossal explosion. Nothing much had remained in that crash. That was exactly five months and twelve days ago, and soon the damp walls of my house haunted me. Every unkempt corner, every discarded object, every bit of the house reminded me of happy times. I imagined I could hear my mum humming in the kitchen, or my dad laughing in the living room. My recent bereavement was getting on my nerves. I have no relations to maintain, no promises to keep. I just had my 12-hour job, with all the extra hours for which I got paid. It wasn't the money that mattered anymore. I just have to keep myself engaged somehow. I think I knew it all along, that I would have to move out one day. If not to escape the cesspool of memories, then to start anew. July 2nd. Sold my house to a businessman who was more than just willing to pay me a handsome amount. Just enough to buy myself this house on the eastern fringes of the city. The nearest house is a mile away. I thought buying a house in the countryside would make me drive an extra hour into the city, so I chose this house with a bright yellow plaster. The colour seemed cheery. I hoped it would help me do away with my former house and all the memories it harboured. The house itself seems pleasant enough, and the surroundings are peaceful. Oh, I wanted to find peace. Yeah, I think I will find peace here. July 4th. I love this house. It's warm and comfortable. The rooms are large, and it gets plenty of sun and air from the windows. I met my nearest neighbour today. He seemed a burly, middle-aged, good-humoured chap, and his small, kindly wife makes really great cookies. However, they seemed to be looking at me a bit queerly when they thought I wasn't looking. But they probably don't have a lot of city people out here, so maybe they're just curious about me. July 7th. Something about this house started to make me feel uncomfortable. I feel like I'm being watched. I woke up from sleep last night, expecting to find an intruder in my house. I don't know why I felt that way. The sensation of being watched was very strong. The air had grown particularly dense and chilly. It took an effort to draw my breath. I think I'm just being paranoid, though. It's new for me, after all. I'm bound to feel uneasy, having lived in the city for so long. Oof, the nights get quiet. Too quiet for my liking. Oh well. July 8th. I woke up again tonight. It felt uncomfortable. The air was heavy. It was different, almost wrong. I switched on my light. Everything looked normal in the light, though, so the feeling dissipated. July 9th. 
I found a discoloration in the yellow ceiling today, directly above my head. The plaster had somewhat faded away in one place. It looked wet. Maybe there was something wrong with the plumbing. <sighs> Have to ask a plumber to come down and take a look. July 11th. I got a plumber to take a look a few days back, but nothing's wrong with it. Even the discoloration wasn't there. But that night, I found that the discoloration was back. The shape looked somewhat familiar, like a man bat. And the next morning, it was just gone. Again. This has been happening for a few days now. Maybe the pipe contracts during the night, or something like that, and water leaks out. It gets cold in the night anyway. Hurts to breathe with the air all heavy. Oh, I need to check this out. July 13th. I have a growing feeling. But the sensation of being watched increases when the discoloration is there. It's creeping me out. I called the plumber who came again, and he said there was nothing wrong. I wish it would go away. It looks like a man more than ever, and it appears at different places every day, I've noticed. Is it alive? Maybe it's a snake that's burrowed in the pipes or something. I swear, I'm going to be up all night. I'll catch it if it moves. July 14th. I couldn't stay up all night. <laughs> Fell asleep. The man shape is now on the left wall. I'll try my luck again tonight. July 15th. Couldn't stay up last night either. Oh, this is frustrating. The damn shape is back, and now on the ceiling. I can't stay up at night like this every day. God, I'll mess up at work. July 17th. This shape is scaring me. Oh, I can't catch it moving. Yet, there it is. In a different place every day. I've tried staying up all night watching the shape intently. God, it just looks like a normal plumbing problem. But it isn't. It isn't. I'm sure it's alive. And I will catch it. Last night I felt so damn scared. I drew the bedsheet like a thin blanket and hid myself under it. I covered every inch of myself from the tips of my tightly curled toes to the bend of my head, and I held the end of the bedsheet tightly clenched in my fist. <laughs> Who was I hiding from? Death, perhaps. Death in the shape of a man. But death is peaceful. Death isn't repulsively yellow. Death is momentary. God, I'm rambling now. <laughs> Maybe what I experienced was a sleep terror or something. I'll look it up. I have to sleep. God, I feel so sleepy. July 20th. Every night, every damn night, I am startled out of sleep to find the discoloration of different places and different positions in my room. I hate it. I can't sleep anymore. It seemed, the discoloration, the man, would choose from the vast yellow a spot, any spot, to persecute me, torture me with uneasy sensations and terror. And I felt disturbingly obsessed with the color. What exactly was the man in the wall telling me? What did I owe him and what did he owe me? I haven't confided in anyone my experiences regarding the nightly errands of the man in the plaster. My colleagues just think I'm suffering from chronic insomnia. One guy actually suggested me a week's leave from the office. <laughs> God, what a joke. 
That was the last thing I would ever want. The more I stayed away, the less I thought of it. It's horrible as it is to come home to this entity, which I'm sure is malevolent. God damn it, I'm gonna call a priest. July 23rd. Today, when I ran away from the house frantically and reached my office, palpitating, my boss called me to his room. He suggested that I was in need of some rest. I grew desperate at the word. I pleaded with him, but his tone grew sharper and he told me that some more deserving and fruitful man should get the money I draw from the office every month without significantly contributing to the company. In my panic and frustration, I'm afraid I screamed at him. He looked at me like I'm crazy. Two security guards forced me out of the office, and another one kicked out my suitcase along with me. I thought of never returning to the house, but where could I go? Am I crazy? No, I'm not. I know I'm not. July 24th. I saw them. I swear. I saw my parents. It was them, with mutilated bodies, dislocated shoulders, detached legs and broken necks on cracked skulls and blood-smeared faces. I haven't seen anything more horrifying. But I blinked, and they were gone. But I can feel them. They're in the walls. They are everywhere. This can't be a drink in Houston hallucination. I know what I saw. I'm not crazy. They want me to join them in the walls. They were my parents. And they were here. I'm not crazy. I raised my gaze up to the ceiling, only to find the man gone. The discoloration had dissolved away like it was never there. I swear, this time I'll catch it if it appears again. I know it's watching me. I have to prove that I'm not crazy. July 25th. It moved. It moved. It moved. It moved. I saw it move. July 26th. Can't write. Fingernail broke. I scratched wall. <laughs> I scratch wall. <laughs> Drink and wall scratch. Scratch. Going home. There weren't any more entries in the diary that the police had found. The inspector stopped reading. The last page was covered with splotches of blood. This was a singular piece of literature, for sure. He looked around at the pale yellow walls. An entire section of a wall was scratched and the plaster was missing. Blood was smeared all over it. He assumed it was from the broken fingernails. The poor man must have gone crazy, thought the inspector. The man's body had been found laying half in and half out of the wall. His face was blue, and he looked strangled. There weren't subcutaneous abrasions or anything like that. If it was possible, it looked as if the man had died from holding his breath for too long. He crazy stuff, he thought. As he stood up to go, he noticed a wet discoloration in the ceiling. But that was only the plumbing. So... He left.
I saw a woman the other day, and I'll never forget her. She wasn't particularly pretty or anything like that. I was putting groceries in the trunk of my car when I looked up and saw her, sitting in the back seat of a car, some feet away. There was a man outside the car, talking on his phone, but I was too far away to hear him. She mouthed something, but I couldn't tell what she was trying to say. Not then, at least. It wasn't until I got home, put away my purchases, and turned on the television, that my heart sank. There, on the local news, was the story of a kidnapped woman. She was the woman in the car that I'd seen. Thinking back to her, I realized what it was she tried to say. Help me! So, did you make it all the way to the end? <laughs> Bonus little story there for those of you who managed it. Hope you didn't bail out too early because you missed that little treat of a tale at the end. Well, everyone, that's it for me for tonight. But as always, I'll be back with you just a couple of days from now. Hope you'll join me again soon. Bye-bye.